Yeah, I think um, this was uh, really a decision that was based on the need for some change, some uh, fresh ideas, new energy. Um, had nothing to do with anybody's performance. I think um, you know, over the last seven years, we've had an amazing group of coaches, uh, all of whom have contributed greatly to our success. Um, and we have had some turnover, and I think some turnover is good um, in this league and uh, and for our players. So I'm excited about the new additions. Um, we have a little different structure within the staff. Um, I think it will all be very positive for the players and, and, um, and for the staff as well. Nothing in particular, um, just a feeling um, at the end of the season that, you know, it was time for, for some, like I said, just some 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 fresh blood and, and new ideas. And uh, very, very um, difficult to make those decisions, as you might um, expect. Um, a lot of people here who have been here a long time who did um, wonderful jobs who um, we love and respect, and uh, but this is – you know, the nature of, of pro sports. And, uh, you know, you just you constantly have to be evolving and adapting. And um, this felt like um, a necessary step for us. Steve, in terms of a, if you're a coach with a player who is not vaccinated, how much time have you spent trying to figure out contingencies in case that person's not available? Or how do you play it if he is, if he isn't? Just what, how you will handle the situation if it comes to, come to that when the season starts? Um, I, I haven't spent any time thinking about that, uh, nor will I. Um, we'll just uh, see how everything plays out. Um, you know, we're hopeful that uh, it, uh, it all uh, is resolved, um, you know, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but we're going into camp tomorrow with, uh, with uh, a plan to, to have everybody out on the floor and, and uh, ready to roll. Hey, Steve. Jason Dumas, Crown Floor. Hope you had a good summer. Uh, you mentioned – last year that navigating winning now and developing some of your young guys isn't always easy. Uh, I just wanted to ask, do you have a plan for Moses and, and Jonathan, and what are your expectations for them this season? I think, uh, yeah, the, the, the plan is to develop them every single day. Um, what that entails is film work, um, on-court work and practice, scrimmages, um, and possibly games. So we have to find the right mix of all that as a staff, as an organization. We'll see where our rotation takes us, you know, in preseason and into the regular season. And then you make adjustments accordingly. Uh, the good news is this year, I think we have a lot more flexibility uh, because of, you know, the COVID restrictions uh, being, a lot of them being lifted. We'll have more options, more availability. Um, and I think, um, I think it'll be a very healthy environment for, for both those young guys. Hi, Coach. Rusty Simmons from the Chronicle. I know it's the, the first day here, but how are you guys approaching that starting two-guard spot until you get Clay back in the mix? Uh, yeah, we're not um, you know, going to figure anything out over the next few days. It'll be in the next few weeks. And, um, you know, obviously by opening night we'll, we'll have a decision. But we've got a lot of really good candidates um, you know, you, you know who they are, so I won't go down the list, but um, we're very comfortable that uh, we'll, we'll find the right combination of players. Hey, Coach. Colin Ward-Henninger, CBSSports.com. Uh, from the end of the 2019 season, obviously, you know, having one of the worst records in the league, COVID hits, now you're back playing with no fans, uh, you're competing for a playoff spot, now you have a chance to get back to championship contention. I'm just curious not only as a coach and on the basketball side, but as a, as a human, as a man in this world, how has your perspective changed over the last couple of years? Well, um, I think uh, the perspective I have is, number one, how uh, lucky we are to do what we do, um, how lucky we are when we have our health and, and um, the health of those around us, family and friends, and you know how lucky we are to, to play basketball for a living in front of an incredible group of fans that uh, provides the energy and joy um, that that we thrive on. So uh, those things, a lot of those things, have been taken away in the last couple of years, and um, absolutely brings a 
a fresh perspective and uh, maybe a necessary one given everything that's uh, happened in the world and in our country the last couple of years. I think, um, you know, there is a sense, um, at least for me, that, um, you know, we, we have to understand we all play a part in society. We, we're, we have this, um, this sort of outsized view of what freedom is and American individualism. And, and while it's certainly amazing to, to enjoy that freedom, um, we also have to function as a society, as a community. That includes our team, you know, our own little community as a team. It includes our communities, our uh, surrounding areas, our entire country. And um, seems, it feels to me like we've lost some perspective on that, and I hope we can get some of that back and start to function as one again. Uh, Bill Huang from Tencent, China. Uh, happy birthday, Coach. Thank you. So uh, last season, you set a goal for, um, for, for the team uh, to be a top 10 defensive team. So coming into this new season, do you have any practical or more realistic goals for the teams? Well, we were very pleased to, uh, to finish with the fifth ranked defense in the league last year. It was a major accomplishment for us. Um, a lot of guys deserve a lot of credit for that, starting with Draymond. Um, I think he's obviously, you know, the leader of our defensive unit. Andrew Wiggins, who had a, a fantastic season. Steph, who was way better defensively than anybody is willing to give him credit for. Um, and we can go down the list. We had a lot of guys, Loon, um, you know, guys who really are, are, are good defenders. So, um, you know, the idea is if you're going to be a championship contender, uh, you got to be balanced. And last year we were 21st in offensive rating, so we got to have better balance to our team this year. And that's that's the goal going in is to is to have, you know, a team that can maintain its uh, de defensive identity, but um, hopefully rebuild our de our offensive uh, identity with with better balance and better spacing. Steve, Bob mentioned Iguodala in here, maybe already kind of acting as a mentor for the, for the young guys. Have you been around him since he's been in, and do you need to see him play in preseason? Does, does Andre Iguodala need to show you what he has left, or do you know at this point? Well, I watched him in Miami the last couple of years, and he was really effective. And um, as you know, with, with Andre, it goes so far beyond you know points and, and scoring. It's um, – and even – what you see defensively, it's um, it's about the leadership, the mentoring, the being in the right spot at the right time, and given the uh, the goal of what we're trying to do with um, the development of young players and winning games, um, I can't think of a better player to have on our team who can help us do both. So, uh, could not be more excited that Andre's back. Kind of a two-part question a little bit, but um, considering you have uh, two guys that are going to enter the season injured, some rookies, uh, how needed do you think that 15th spot will be to potentially have a guy who could maybe you know, play in the rotation? And then what, what do you think of the uh, competitors you'll have for that 15th spot, some of the new veterans? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, there's a reason we've invited people um, to come in. Um, I'm excited about you know, Langston and Avery. Um, I'm excited about Gary Payton. Um, you know, uh, under being under contract, um, you know, we've um, we, we have to use training camp to uh, to see what we have um, and to see how the the pieces fit together in this year's puzzle. And uh, whether we use that spot or not, we'll see. But uh, it's the whole point of camp is to really get a feel for our team and and then put our heads together over the next few weeks and figure that out. Bob told us that there's no specific date for Clay's return. It might be December, January, but Clay has to be the one who says, I'm ready now. How much will his voice matter with his readiness? Because it seems like Clay's the type of guy who wanted to play yesterday. Yeah, Clay is going to tell us he's ready quickly, but um, Rick has to tell us he's ready too. So um, it's a combination of things. But uh, there is a history with, with uh, Achilles injuries that um, our group has studied carefully. Um, we've, we have very recent experience with it, with DeMarcus. Um, I know Clay has been in touch with Kevin Durant. Um, 
and they've talked about um, you know Kevin's return and and uh, healing process. So um, you know we we need to give Clay some time. Uh, he's in great shape. He's going to take part in a lot of training camp um, coming up. No contact yet, but a lot of the other activities and. Um, he's really excited about where he is, so we'll we'll just see where it all goes. But I know I can't wait for for that night. Um, and Bob already told me it has to be a home game, so I, I've I've got that figured out. Uh, we will not be starting Clay out on the road somewhere. Steve saying on the uh, injury front, with what you've seen from James over the summer, how close? And I know Bob already said there's no timeline necessarily, but how close do you feel like he is from getting back on the floor and, and being closer to game action? Yeah, we don't have a timeline. Um, he's doing great with his rehab. Um, we're going to be very careful. Obviously, he's a young player, um, incredibly talented, and um, we have a great training staff that is going to be cautious and really walk him through every step of the rehab process. So, We'll just see how it goes, but um, very comfortable with the uh, development process that we have in place. Um, our our um, development staff is really uh, doing a great job um, already employing a lot of the uh, uh, the structure of, uh, of our development that's going to happen, you know, in between games. And um, all of our young players will be getting a healthy amount of playing time um, even if they're not, you know, playing in games for us, um, they're going to be playing a lot of basketball. Steve, how was uh, the experience in, in China this summer and your whole Olympic experience? It's an amazing experience. Um, you know, it was. Uh, I felt uh, really bad for the Japanese people um, because the, you know they spent years preparing for. The Olympics and it's such an amazing culture of uh, of service and so everywhere we went people were so kind and generous and caring and um, and yet nobody could could come um, to watch so it was very sad but um, but it was it was really really fun to be a part of um, a gold medal winning team and coaching all the players coaching Kevin and and Draymond again getting to know all the other guys on the team and then, um, you know, coaching with uh, Pop, who has become, you know, a, a real mentor for me and, and um, you know, one of my best friends, along with the rest of an amazing staff. It was a phenomenal experience. Coach Chris Alvarez, ABC. Um, players always talk about in the offseason working on something or thinking about something or trying to get better. As a, from a coach, what do you do in the offseason that you try to work on or get better or something you learned about? Um, I think we're all constantly evolving, and um, you know, I I tend to um, pick up little things from books and podcasts, and it's amazing how how much you can learn from stuff that has nothing to do with basketball, but everything to do with human beings. And I find myself in the summer highlighting a lot of passages, writing them down, keeping them in a file, because I know that they will come in handy um, during the year coaching individual guys, coaching the team, you know, just trying.